you have a D1, I'm going to do the next. Too. Don't look at the book. Shut your book. I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to be doing. So that you can open it. <laughs> I want to complete the square to solve the following. Shut your book, you cheater. <laughs> shut it, shut it. I want you to be looking. Tomorrow, check your phone. Tomorrow's on the Yeah. I want you to pay attention. I want to solve this. This is called the general quadratic equation. Why is it general? Because it has an A, a B, and a C, and not numbers. So A, B, and C can be anything. The only thing that cannot be true is A definitely cannot equal zero. Because if a was equal to zero, this would not be a quadratic, it would be linear or constant. Okay, so how do I solve this equation? Divide by a. Divide by a. The method doesn't change. Whatever that lead coefficient is, get rid of it. What are you left with? X squared. X squared math. X squared plus b over a times x. Blank equals negative c, negative c over a. Yay. Who says you need numbers? Me. No, 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 no. This is uh, much better. Half of b over a. A. Half of b over a. A over half of a. Uh, half of b over a. I go over to the side. One half of b over a. B over 2A. I thought 2A would be B over 2A. Isn't it? I mean, 1 times B, 2 times A, B over 2A. All right, square it. Positive B squared over 4A squared. It's boring. But if I add it to the left, I better add it to the right. So plus B squared over 4A squared. Yeah, what's happening with the x? Okay. This x? Yes. What happened to the x over here? Oh, no. Did it disappear? Yeah, you just got rid of it. I ignore it all the time. I'm looking at the coefficient. Okay. So you take half of the coefficient and you square it. I don't even know what the letter is, but no. B. <laughs> x is the variable. The a, b's, and c's are the numbers. A, b's, and c's are considered constants. So you do exactly the same thing. You have this b over a as a coefficient. You take half of it and you square it. You don't bring the x into the mix. All right, left-hand side becomes? All squared is equal to common denominator. 4a squared. What's this one missing that the other one has? A 4 and an a. So I'd multiply the bottom by 4a and multiply the top by 4a. Now, don't write anything underneath this. I'm going to do a little flipping things around. I hate leading off with a negative. I'd rather the negative be in the middle. So I'm going to do with the commutative property, flip them around. The common denominator is 4a squared. I'm going to put the positive b squared first. I'm going to put the minus 4ac second. And we get that. It just makes it look a little bit nicer rather than negative 4ac plus b squared. Plus, it's starting to line up to exactly what I want it to be. All right, what do you do to both sides? Square root it. So you square root this side, square root this side. The left-hand side becomes? X plus B over 2A is equal to? Plus or minus? No, there's no I. See, b squared minus 4ac, you don't know if it's positive or negative, so just leave it alone. So it would be the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Starting to look familiar? 
And I guess I'll have to ask you this. If you have the square root of x squared plus y squared, is that equal to x plus y? Yes or no? What? Yeah. Is the square root of x squared plus y squared equal to x plus y? Yeah. yeah. No. Why? Yeah, because it connects to plus or minus. Uh, if you have 4 plus 9, is that equal to 2 plus 3, which is 5? Uh, no, because 4 plus 9 is 13, and this is the square root of 13, not the square root of 25. So you can't touch that p squared. Nothing with minuses and pluses. The square root law works only on products and quotients. All right, so what's the next step? Oh, they have a common denominator. And you get x is equal to common denominator of 2a. What goes on top? B, negative b. I'm going to change its sign because you're shifting its side. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And if you have not seen this before, you're lying. You should have seen this before. I haven't seen it before. Yeah, liar. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Really? This is the quadratic formula. This is new math. I ain't never seen it before. <laughs> this is new math. Quadratic formula. It solves quadratic equations. So don't get them confused. What is the formula to solve the equation? They're not exactly the same. So, for instance, quick easy one. You have to memorize it, sorry. Negative b plus or minus squared b squared minus 4 c over 2a. Oh, my she didn't tell you about the minus 4. She lied to you. This thing has more uses than. What's nice about the quadratic formula? Uh, oh, everything. Let's say we have an equation like this. It's ugly, right? Yeah. It is, trust me. But it's doable. You should know how to do it because it's just little pieces that we've been learning all year round. What do I do with x plus 3 all squared? Multiply it out, right? It would be x plus 3 times x plus 3. What's x plus 3 times x plus 3? x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right. And x plus 2 times x minus 3? x squared plus negative 1x plus negative 6. Ah, oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. i got to change something. Oh, ah. Let's put it. I'm glad I'm not writing anything. Be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> Let me just put this here. Two, two, there we go. That'll fix it. Two. I need that. Otherwise, the x squared is canceled. All right, so this side becomes 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 equal to x squared minus x minus 6. Woohoo! What do you do now? Well, yes, but they're on the opposite sides. Get them all on one side. Keep the x squared positive. Keep the x squared positive. You do not want a negative x squared because then it makes it messy. So subtract x squared, add x, add 6. So if you subtract x squared, this becomes x squared. If you add x, this becomes 13x. If you add 6, this becomes 24. And this is equal to 0. I'm hoping that there are no factors of 24 that add 13. 2 and 12, 8 and 3, 6 and 4, none of them touch 13. That's good. It doesn't matter. We can still use the quadratic formula to solve it. All right. You've got to be really careful. The quadratic formula only works if your polynomial is in order and it is equal to 0. It has to be equal to 0. All bets are off if you just leave the pieces anywhere that they want to be. You have to get it in standard form. In this form, a is equal to a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero. So a is equal to zero. A squared. Hmm. Let me, how about this? I'll write it this way: a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero. Yeah. 
plus c is equal to 0. x squared is the same in both of these, right? Oh, so but a must be equal to the number that's sitting in front of it. What's sitting in front is 1. So a is equal to 1. What's b equal to? 13. b is always associated with the linear factor, the x factor. So it's going to be 13. And c is equal to? 24. So now I know what a, b, and c are, and all I have to do is plug it into the formula. Okay. First thing about learning how to memorize a formula is you don't look at the book and write your numbers into the formula. You copy the formula down every time you use it. You'll get so sick of doing it, you'll eventually get stuck in your head where I need it to be because you don't get this formula on the test. Why would you not get formula? Because I'm a jerk. Um, <laughs> no, I need you to memorize the formula. This is one formula you need to memorize. So, you start off with saying, well, this is an equation of x. So you go, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I guess you could say this. Yeah, negative b, negative b plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac over 2a, over 2a. Do you do that again? No. <laughs> you two, wonderful. So, when you're substituting into a formula, it is really important to replace the letters with an empty set of parentheses. Too many sign mistakes are made if you don't. You need them, though. You need them, though, because people do the weirdest things of plugging numbers into formulas. Changing the signs when they don't need to be changed. All right, what's b equal to in this case? 13, so 13 goes in here. b again here, so this is 13. This is a, 1, c, 24. And then finally down here is a again, which is 1. Now this one is nice because they're all positive, you know, positive 1, positive 13, positive 24. The parentheses are very useful, and I'd highly suggest if they're positive, you can leave them off. But if it's a negative number, you really want those parentheses to be there. All right, so this becomes x equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 minus 96. Sounds good. All over 2. 169 minus 96. 73. 73, so x equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 73 all over 2. And then, of course, you could type it into your calculator and get some nice fast little answers. <sighs> okay, so when I get through this word problem, there's only two pieces of information that are really relevant. This 150 feet per second, what does that represent? Distances. Feet per second is definitely not a distance. When you're driving your car, you're driving at 50 miles per hour. That's a speed, which is also known as velocity. It's also known as velocity. So this piece right here must be v sub 0, because it is the only velocity in that whole thing. Feet per second is the same thing as miles per hour. It is a speed. It is a velocity. There is a difference between speed and velocity, but you can learn that later in life. Um, this over here is the other number that's given. It's 10 feet. What is this considered? A distance, so this would be d sub zero. And all you have to do is plug it into the function, and you have everything you need to know. So we get negative 16 t squared plus v sub zero t. Well, what's v sub zero in this case? 150. 150 t plus d sub zero, which is 10. So this function here specifically relates to this rifle being fired vertically. It has its right velocity and it has the right distance off the ground. What's the T stand for? Time. So far. Time. Seconds. T seconds. Um, if this was miles per hour, the time frame would be hours and so forth and so on. Also, if this was um, meters per second, instead of feet, we'd be always talking about meters. Of course, the function would change a bit. Okay, so here's the big question. How long until the bullet hits the ground? Well, if the bullet hits the ground, this is the best question I ever come up with. How far off the ground is the bullet when it hits the ground? I don't know. Yeah, but how far off the ground is the bullet when it hits the ground? How far off 
off the ground is my foot. Zero. Zero. It's zero feet off the ground. I'm trying to learn something. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> but she should have done when she got into class. And I was trying to learn when you were late. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you're on the ground, you are zero feet off the ground. So D of T is going to get replaced with zero. We want to know when the distance off the ground is zero. So you get zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 150 T plus 10. And that's just a quadratic equation. That's all it is. It's a nice quadratic equation. All the t's and numbers are on one side, and it's set equal to zero. So what formula can we use to solve for t? The quadratic formula. In this case, it just changes slightly. Instead of x equals, we're going to have t equals, because that's the variable we're working with. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, in this case, what's A equal to? Negative 16. Negative 16. So this is A. B is going to be 150. There's B. And C, of course, is at 10. And all you have to do is substitute it in. The only problem is you're going to have to use your calculator to get the final answer. Because you're not going to sit there and go, oh, it was in the air, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 27 over 3 seconds. Because that makes absolutely... Sense. I have no idea how long it's in the air. So t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plug in what we know. b is 150. That goes here and here. What's a? Negative 16. Negative 16 goes here. 10. C? 10. And then down here a again. Negative 16. Tabor? What's a negative times a negative? <laughs> uh, but you really want to start off with what's a negative times a negative? You want to start there to make sure you know what the sign of the second number is. That's where your mistake was. Other people's mistake would be over here if this was a negative number. All right, so this simplifies a little bit to, let's see, t equals negative 150 plus or minus the square root of, I highly suggest instead of doing this piecewise, type this whole line into your calculator exactly the way it looks. How parentheses and everything. How do we do that again? Just type in 150 squared minus four times parentheses, negative 16 parentheses, parentheses, 10 parentheses, and hit equals. Not that it's all over one. But don't type the square root in, leave that off. 23,000. <sighs> And this is all over negative 32. Okay. Now the rest of this, I'm not going to worry about breaking down 23,140 because we're going for a decimal anyways. So let's see if you can type this in correctly and get a decimal answer. Little analysis before we get going. If I do minus and a minus, what kind of answer am I going to end up with in the top? No, no, no. A negative number minus another number is going to be negative. negative. Oh. And if you divide by a negative, that becomes positive. I'll, I'll give you this, though. Negative 150 plus this square root will give you a positive answer on the top. And if you divide by a negative, it will be negative. Now, out of those two answers, a positive answer and a negative answer, which one do you want? Positive. There's no such thing as negative time. So when you type it in, just do the minus 150, the minus the square root, and then divide by negative 32. That'll give you the answer. Don't divide by negative 32 in your coupler on that first line. Get the answer to the top. It equals divide by negative 32. So negative 150 minus the square root of 2. Divided by, what you get? 9.4, anybody else concur? I don't trust anybody's calculations. I always wait for someone else to say the same thing, because I've put written numbers on the board before, and someone else will come up with something different, and then corrections have to be made. 9.44? So, t equals about 9.4. 9.4 what? Seconds. Seconds. 
So if this rifle, it's probably not a very good rifle, it's probably more like a BB gun, <laughs> but uh, you get the idea. No, 9.4 seconds is pretty long. You know, exactly. one, two, yeah, that's pretty yeah. long. <laughs> now, there's another formula to figure out how high it goes, but you won't learn that until college algebra. Probably 22. Hmm? Like a 22. 22? 22 uh, rifle. 22, 22 rifle? Yeah, it's possible. I always could look up the muzzle velocities of certain rifles find out how far things would go. But that's a neat little equation. It tells you how long you have to get out of the way. The angle will come down at the same velocity as wind resistance. About. Not exactly, but see, wind resistance messes it up. But if there was no wind resistance, if I'm right, I think it does come down at exactly the same velocity. Yeah, wind resistance will also push the bullet over too on it. It won't flow straight up, come straight down, actually. Yeah, wind will mess it around, and it'll float. So this is the imaginary Earth with no atmosphere. <laughs> You'd be in a spacesuit shooting this thing, Rob. Um, there is another formula for wind resistance, but it is a lot more complex. Just, anytime you get into more realism, mathematics gets horrible. Um, so they try to model things. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So that's a good little application of the quadratic formula. Everybody finished their lab from yesterday? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, today is just more applications book style, though. That was the hard one I wanted to do. 